Hello class 10, welcome to the second part of the chapter electrolysis. So we'll straight away start with the mechanism of electrolysis. Mechanism number one, an electrolyte on dissolving in water. Now in the last class I told you what an, uh, what an electrolyte is. An electrolyte is a chemical compound which dissociates in a molten state or in an aqueous, aqueous solution state and helps in the conduction of electricity okay so an electrolyte is a disso uh, on dissociation in water dissociates into cations and anions cations are positively charged ions and they are usually the ions of metals uh, hydrogen and ammonium please remember hydrogen uh, ammonium and metals they are positive ions where and the uh, anions are the negative ions and they are usually the ions of non metals so an electrolyte on dissociation in water dissociates into free cations and anions and allows the flow of electricity through it degree of dissociation is the extent on which an electrolyte dissociates or breaks up like for example strong electrolytes are uh, strong acids strong bases and salts of strong acids and bases they are good electrolytes they are strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes like uh, weak bases like ammonium hydroxide magnesium hydroxide and weak acid like acetic acid or carbonic acid they are weak electrolytes and they do not they do not dissociate or break up into ions properly so uh, though once the electrolyte which conducts or dissociates completely into ions are called st uh, strong electrolytes whereas weak electrolytes are the ones which uh, dissociates partially in its aqueous solution or a molten uh, in a molten state Number, uh, number three, all ions carry an electric charge and are responsible for the flow of current through the solution. And the last one is the number of positive charges on the, uh, on the ions equals to the number of negative charges and thus the solution of an ele electrolyte is in equilibrium. So in an electrolyte, if it dissociates into ions like uh, NaCl dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus. In its solution or in, in the molten state, the number of positive ions and the negative ions, they are equal. They are absolutely equal. Okay, The number of uh, cations and the anions in the electrolyte, they are equal. So as a whole, the electrolyte is in equilibrium, electrolytic equilibrium as we call it. Okay, now characteristics of electrolysis. The passage of electricity through an electrolyte causes the met metallic ions to migrate towards the cathode and the non-metallic ions or the anions will migrate towards the anode. So anions or the negative ions or non-metallic ions migrate towards the anode. A anions, A anode. Okay, and cations or the metallic ions or hydrogen ions or ammonium ions, cations, they are positively charged ions, they always go to the cathode, the negative electrode or the cathode. Yeah. Next, the preferential discharge of the ions depends on the position of the electrochemical series. I'll talk about electrochemical series later as we go on. Uh, with the chapter electrolysis then I'll explain it to you the number of electrons gained by the anode is equal to the number of el electrons don uh, donated at the cathode so cathode always give electrons whereas anode always receives electrons from the ions okay so the number of ions received and lost in the by the electrodes are equal the products of electrolysis are formed at the anode and the cathode itself. So the, we'll talk about when, when we uh, do the electrolysis, then you will understand the products formed at the anode and the cathode. Usually, uh, non-metals are dissociated at the cathode, uh, anode 
and metals, hydrogen ions and uh, ammonium ions are dissociated at the anode. So, uh, these are the products from. So, basically anions go to the anode and then cations go to the cathode and the products are formed in the respective electrode. Only hydrogen gas and metals are liberated at the cathode and hence are called electro positive elements. So, hydrogen and metals, hydrogen and metals are usually uh, liberated at the are always not usually are always liberated at the cathode. So, they are called electro positive whereas, uh, the non uh, ions of the non metals now what happens is are liberated at the anode the, only the non metals are liberated ions of non metals goes towards the anode and then non metals are liberated at the anode and they, thus the non metals are called electro negative elements now we go to the next important term that we must understand here uh, in the electrolysis chapter that is electrolytic dissociation and the ionization now dissociate means to break up dissociate means to break up so ionic compounds like for example sodium chloride NaCl made up of ions sodium ion and chloride ion Na plus and Cl minus when it dissolves in water it dissociates into ions it produces Na plus and Cl minus so that is uh, uh, so, when there is a passage of electricity in the electrolyte of sodium chloride, now it will dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus. So, the process due to which an ionic compound in a fused state, fused state means molten state. So, the process due to which an ionic compound in the fused state or in an aqueous solution state dissociates into ions by the passage of electric current is called electrolytic dissociation. So, we must know the difference between electrolytic dissociation and ionization. So, electrolytic dissociation I just told you that electrolytic dissociation is a process due to which the ionic compounds in a fused state or in a molten state or in a liquid uh, aqueous solution state they dis dissociate into ions due to the passage of electric current through it is known as electrolytic dissociation. So, I will give you an example of electrolytic dissociation here lead bromide the molten lead bromide we will come to that later. So, lead, uh, lead, molten lead bromide PBBr2 now dissociates into ions lead ions PB. So, what is the valency of lead here? lead valency is 2. So, since it is a metal, it forms a positive ion. Remember, metal ions, ammonium ions, hydrogen ions, they are all positive. So, lead being a metal ion, it is electropositive. So, therefore, it forms positive ions having two positive charges because the valency of lead is 2. And now, what about bromine? So, we have bromide ions, Br, bromide ions, Br, valency is 1 and since it is a non-metal, so therefore negative. Since it is a non-metal, so therefore it is negative. Now, how many atoms of bromine are here? Two atoms of bromine makes up one molecule of lead bromide. So, therefore, two ions of bromine will be, bromide ions will be formed. So, 2 Br minus. Why 2 Br minus? Because there are two atoms of bromine in the molecule of lead bromide and why only one minus, why minus? Because it is a non-metal electronegative element. Why only one negative charge? Because the valency of bromine is 1. I hope you understood that. Now, we come to ionization. This was electrolytic dissociation. So, lead bromide is an ionic compound in a molten, kept in a molten state and then kept in a molten state. So, when electricity passes through it, it dissociates, it breaks up into ions, lead ions and bromide ions. <clears throat> we will talk about dissociation here, okay, later. Now, we talk to, we'll talk about ionization. Now, what is ionization? Ionization is a process which takes place in the covalent compounds which takes place in the covalent compound it involves in the formation of ions from the molecule which are not in a 
solid ionic state. So it is HCl, hydro, hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride is a covalent compound, a polar covalent compound. We have already done it in the chapter called chemical bonding. So HCl, I, as I told you, I'll give you a, a little bit of revision on the formation of HCl. Yeah. So hydrogen here has one electron in the outermost shell and chlorine will have seven electrons in its outermost shell. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So since it has 17 protons, chlorine has 17 protons in it. So this hydrogen, shared uh, electron of hydrogen is more attracted towards the uh, nucleus of chlorine. So therefore, hydrogen sort of loses, usually it doesn't, but it sort of loses. It is This uh, electron of hydrogen is attracted more towards chlorine. So hydrogen will have a, slow, a little bit of positive charge and chlor chloride or the chlorine will uh, have slightly negatively charged. So now, in a molten state or in a aqueous solution state, HCl, since it, it, it has a covalent, it is a covalent compound, it does not have ions, yet it dissociates into ions H plus and Cl minus. As I told you, hydrogen, ammonia, metal ions always form anions, uh, cations or positive ions because they are electropositive, whereas non metallic ions will always form negative ions. Now the since Y plus only one plus and one minus here because hydro, the valency of hydrogen is one and therefore hydrogen H plus. Chlorine is a non-metal so negative uh, negatively charged ion. Why only single negative charge? Because the valency of chlorine is one. So this is the uh, difference between electrolytic dissociation and ionization. Now we come to the conductivity of the metals and the non-metals. Okay, so we will come to that later. First, since we are talking about the dissociation and the ionization, I want to discuss the formation of ions. I want to discuss the formation of ions like water, for example. Okay, water is a bad conductor. It's an insula it does not conduct electricity. But if you have any impurities in it, it, it breaks up into ions. It becomes a good conductor. Okay, so this is not this water over here. I'm talking about is not a pure water. It will have some uh, solute dissolved in it. Uh, it is not a pure water. So therefore, H2O, H2O. Please remember, is this dissociates into H plus and ionizes into not dissociates. It ionizes because uh, H2O is a covalent compound. Covalent compounds usually ionizes it does not have ions in it so therefore it will ionize into H plus and OH minus this is very very important if you want to in the in this chapter in the later half or latter half of the chapter so H plus and OH minus HCl is a covalent compound it ionizes into H plus and Cl minus as we have already as we have already done it here. Nitric acid HNO3 it dissociates into H plus and NO3 minus. Now why H plus? As I already told you, hydrogen is hydrogen and metals will have positive uh, positive charge and uh, why only single positive charge? Because the valency is one. Nitrate again, nitrate obviously it is not a metal metallic uh, ion so therefore it is a negatively charged. Why only single negative charge because the valency of nitrate is 1. Similarly when we, co we come to sulfuric acid, ionization of sulfuric acid, acid so H plus obviously hydrogen H plus. Why H plus because it is electropositive and the valency is 1, therefore only one positive charge. Now since 
there are you can see there are two atoms of hydrogen please remember so you will have two ions of hydrogen having single positive charge and we come to SO4 obviously SO4 is not a metallic ion so therefore it forms SO4 2 minus <coughs> SO4 minus because it is not a metallic. Why 2 minus? Because the valency of sulfate is 2. Similarly, we come to KOH. K, since it is a metallic electropositive, so it will form, it is metal and forms a positive ion. Why single plus? Because valency is 1. Next, we come to OH minus. Obviously, OH is electronegative ion. Why only single negative charge? Because the valency of hydroxide is 1. NaOH. Similarly, Na plus. Why Na plus? Because it is a metal. Why only single plus? Because why only single plus? Because valency is 1. OH minus. Okay. S here, calcium. Ca. Now calcium plus because it's a metal, it's electropositive. Now, how many positive charges will it have? Its valency is two, so therefore Ca two plus. Is it understood? Then we have of obviously OH minus. But now we can see in the formula the formula of calcium hydroxide there are two OH. So therefore, we'll have two ions of hydroxyl ions. Two hydroxyl ions. PBBr2. PB, electropositive. What's the valency of lead? Two. So, PB2 plus. Br2. 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 Now, how many atoms of bromine are there? Two atoms. So therefore, we will have two ions of bromine. Now, what's the valency of bromine? 1. So, you will have 1 negative charge. Why negative charge? Because it is a non-metal. Similarly, copper chloride. This is Cu. Copper valency is 2. So, 2 plus. And chlorine or chloride. There are 2 atoms of chlorine. So, you will have 2 ions of chlorine. Have, its valency is 1. So, 1 negative charge. Is it understood? And the last one. Copper sulfate. This is very, very important for you to know, to understand, because we need this in the latter half of the chapter. If you do not know the ionization and the dissociation properly, you will not understand anything later on. So please practice this at home. It's on page number 109 for your kind information in your chemistry textbook, page number 109. Please go through this. It's very, very important. Copper sulfate. CuSO4. Cu copper is a metal. So therefore it will form a positive ion. How many positive charges? <coughs> Excuse me. How many positive charges? Two. Why? Because the valency of copper is two in this case. Is it okay? Now, what about sulfate ions? S O4 sulfate ions now. Sulfate, it's non-metallic, electronegative, negative ion. What is the valency of sulfate? 2. So therefore, 2. So this is all about the dissociation and the ionization. Okay. So we will compare the last portion of this chapter. We will compare the uh, metallic conduction and the electrolytic conduction. Okay, now the in metals, metals are good conductors of electricity. Why? Because it allows the flow of electrons. So, in the electrolyte, the flow of electricity takes place by the flow of ions. In the electrolyte, in the electrolysis, in the electrolyte, so electrolyte is a com chemical compound which is in the uh, which is used in the e electrolysis process electrolytical pro electrolytic process it's a chemical compound which is uh, found which is used in a liquid state either in a molten state 
or in an aqueous solution state which undergoes decomposition these are usually ionic compounds okay so anyway so in metals it is the electricity the flow of electricity is actually the flow of electrons whereas the flow of electricity in electrolysis takes place because of the flow of ions there is no decomposition of parent metal and thus there is no change in the chemical properties of the metal whereas uh, in the electrolysis there is decomposition of a metal and a non-metal in the respective electrodes and new substances will be formed so the chemical properties will be altered in the electrolyte metals are good conductors of electricity in a solid state in a solid state or also in a liquid state but uh, electrolyte are never a good conductor in a solid state why because ions the ions are like for example hcl or let's say pbbr2 pbbr2 so these ions will have a very strong electrostatic force of attraction during the uh, in a solid state so therefore in a solid state these are not a good conductor of electricity so therefore it has to be in a molten state liquid state in a molten form or in an aqueous solution state and the last part is <clears throat> during a metallic metallic conduction there is no transfer of matter the matter remains the same no new products are formed whereas uh, during the electrolytic conduction there is a transfer of ions and new substances are formed at the anode and the cathode to understand this you have to follow my next class okay so i hope you understood now as uh, before i sign off this is very very important electrolytic dissociation i repeat it it's in page number 109 please go to this before we go to the next part of the chapter okay i hope you understood thank you so much for watching have a good day